You're listening to Off to Market with Scott Farley and Hamish Chadwick. I'm Hamish. And I'm Scott. And today we have a special guest, Michelle O'Hara. So she's from O Marketing. Michelle, do you want to explain a little bit about your business? Sure. Well, first of all, guys, thanks very much for having okay. me today. I'm thanks looking for forward along. to this. Privilege. Um, look, we at O Marketing, we're basically, we become the in-house marketing team for businesses that don't want to go and spend a fortune and don't want to basically have to have 10 team members which is going to cost you an absolute fortune and we do everything from social media marketing through to traditional marketing I'm a big fan of creating relationships and you know building sustainable business so yeah that's what we love to do magic magic so we've already had a bit of a chat before the before the meeting and mm. found that you sort of your preferred customer or your premium customers the two ten million dollar customer we are obviously a lot different we, we, we sit with our startups and all the rest of it but we hope always to have customers that get to that point and fairly quickly with the right marketing um, so yeah we, I guess I, I'd like to love I'd love to find out how because I do unique products uh, quite often it's never been done before they're called first to world products or hundred hundred year change products mm-hmm. very disruptive but Exciting. the biggest two is a two two-sided saw because when it's unique you almost have to educate the market about why they want it so Absolutely. if you were presented with that sort of situation I know it's probably not your your bread and butter but you're obviously very smart at what you do oh, thank how, you. How, how, <laughs> how would you recommend that people with a really unique idea who have to educate the market mm-hmm. I mean that can be very costly yes how, how would you tackle that one Great question. And look, it's it's not just the, the inventors and the startups, it's every business. Because of the change in marketing now, you know, when I first started, it was old school. You met someone, you created a relationship, they were loyal, but you don't have that anymore. The most important thing I would say to any business is research who your ideal client is. You know, I just, I find particularly people who are starting out and, you know, I've been there having run businesses for 13 years um you you get worried that you you want every you know you can help everybody and that's where they go wrong so what happens with their marketing is they just scattergun you know like a shotgun to hoping that they will hit someone so the biggest thing i would say is that work out who your ideal client or ideal clients are and then make sure you pick the platforms and talk specifically to those people on those platforms mm. from a branding point of view, from a marketing point of view, and also from a sales point of view, because then you'll hit the targets better. Good advice. Mm. Yeah, that's really, really mm. great advice. And we see it, well, my, Hamish and I have discussed it before, we, we see clients going out and we do see the scattergun effect happening. And if you don't know better, mm. that's probably you, you you're almost, a lot of money. You're looking for what works and what doesn't and that, and that way you're almost researching your client your client you sort of you're hoping that you're going to find some some mark and then come back and tell you who they are well that's exactly you're what saying, happens go the other way. yeah the go the other first. way yeah. absolutely work out who it's for mm. and then tailor what you're doing to them and i mean you know hamish with the from the branding side how important that is mm. because the biggest thing i find is that when you scattergun is that if the right client comes then they'll come and then they'll stalk you yeah that's what we do now with social media they're going to look at everything and if everything is not aligned to the initial message you gave them you've lost them and they don't even know why you know it's a subconscious yeah right removal from your brand so So websites everything facebook page message everything yeah to the landing page to the more even the colors the logos everything needs to be aligned um, to talk to that client and that's why it's so important to find out who they are to start with absolutely so in reality Mm. well usually part of my research is to find out who they are before i even start designing even better but a lot of people don't but but that's one part of it then i (laughs) hand hand it all back to them then they go into the marketing so Mm. if i've if i've aligned it to a certain clientele and they go and pitch it at another it's going to, not going to, it not going to work it doesn't yeah. work yeah. yes and the research you do um to is that an, an, an offer you provide or a service you provide to go and do the research find out who the client is absolutely because quite useful because i wouldn't know where yeah. to start with that well that's part of our other, whole other the, yeah discovery right, um so. session is and um discovery research is to you know let's work out where you actually fit in the marketplace and does your pricing match that client 
you know, does everything else match so that that client, when they do come, they that's exactly what they want. So yeah. you have to start there. Yeah. Um, and you're right. I do find, you know, we all come up with great ideas and we think it's the best idea. And, and I, you know, that's how I started in business I, with an event management company, actually. Um, great idea. I had the market out there. I thought, oh, okay, yeah, let's, here we go. We're excited. Threw all this money at it, <laughs> you know, and lost 15 grand the first time out. So then I thought, oh, I did this, this, this wrong. Okay, went again and still lost 10 grand, you know, yeah. and I'm really happy to share that with people because the, the three main things that I learned from that was one, I didn't know my numbers. I didn't know how many people I needed to talk to um, in order to achieve what I wanted to achieve. Um, I wasn't clear on who the client was mm. and how to target them on what platforms. And basically, I really didn't know what I was selling. You know, I wasn't really clear on what I was selling and what the, the benefits were to the yeah, right. clients. Yeah, Because mm -hmm. so, I think we've, we've seen that recently. We're not mentioning anyone, but uh, there's products that we come across where the inventor, it's a great idea, it's a fantastic idea, and they've originally uh, identified a niche, mm -hmm. but then they have so many people that come to them and say, oh, well, you know, I could use, oh, well, sorry, they identify themselves Oh well, I can see how I could make a lot more money by targeting everyone. Yes. And you know, we've Scott and I have seen this recently, and it's it's a shame sometimes to see products that almost go into a grey area. They they have a specific uh, target, and then as people get, well, I don't want to say greedy, but it's almost like you can see too many opportunities where you should yes. really just focus. So that's your advice as well. You've got to, as an entre entrepreneur, identify, target, keep going. Don't use scattergun because that's that's an, again another example for me of this particular product of just going out and trying to uh, manipulate the marketing to suit everyone rather than yes. the specific target. Absolutely. And it's quite Absolutely. dangerous. Mm. And, and I think also entrepreneurs, I know I did it in the beginning, is that you get scared, Yeah. you know, and you think, because you aren't completely sure, like even though you know it's a great product, it, you still want to make money. So I think we, I know myself, is that you, it's the old thing, like when you ask people, who's your ideal client? Oh, everyone, I can help everyone. Yeah, but who do you really want to help? And who can you, actually, that's probably the best question is who can afford you? Mm. That's the mm -hmm. first question, mm. you know, is who can actually afford your product so that you can actually make enough cash flow and enough money so that you can grow this business. Mm. Start there and, but, but it is scary. So I understand that it's, um, you know, they, you do, they could do go like this because it's, Oh, but what if I target that person and they don't buy? That's always the fear, I think. I know I've been there. We had a recently. We um, when I have a strategy meetings, we, we we decide which which first price point we're going to go for, and then the pipeline. Excellent. So Perfect. some some things will be aimed directly at OEM, individual equipment manufacturers, and they can in some ways a premium brand will do top-down marketing so they actually market the product for you in a way mm -hmm. some go straight to retail some go straight to direct sales online you have to find out which which avenue you go to to start with and mm -hmm. yeah we had one where there was we went for the premium mm -hmm. quite often in australia you have to go for premium yes <laughs> unfortunately because you can't be a me too the chinese have got it all wrapped up you've and got no chance you're yeah. just getting pro you know competing on price which you can't win on no um, just because of volume and so uh, quite often you know these are all premium products you see over here and the premiums allow you some profit margin to be able to reinvest in marketing and mm. the rest of it and anyway mm. um, this product here was aimed at the OEM very premium you know it's all you know top top quality everything and um, and then before we'd even gone to push the button on manufacturing which is a 12 month pro one month process with this product was very complicated somebody at a party um, mentioned oh, that he should, no. go, he should go live on Facebook and unfortunately what happened it's very tempting because you know it's a beautiful idea and you, you've got the prototype and it's working and you want to get get people to know about it because it's it's, it's you know your little baby and unfortunately what the problem was there is it drove the, the market expectation there because he, he was approaching um, non-premium customers and oh, they, they, they had a certain mind set about what price they would pay yes, of course. and then a lot of pressure came on and mm. we were like we've got to try and make this cheaper it's like no we don't we no. have to try and keep this so you have to sort of set a course and then you're almost stuck with it for a little while i think unless something really drastic changes and yeah. actually on those lines that is so true <clears throat> and one of the other areas that i see every business doesn't matter of size is the tracking and measuring 
of mm. what you're doing. I mean, I've just seen so many people over the years, they throw all their money at certain things and then they don't even know if it's working. So it's, it's you know, you can, with analytics now, you know, with everything, you can track everything. So yes, you must test and you must, you know, A, B, C test, particularly with your products, I would imagine, but you must track your marketing and mm. your spend and your return on investment and don't just throw money at stuff for the, because someone said that SEO is good or someone said that AdWords were good, but what, you know, and I just find people don't, don't set those expectations of what return do you, you know, do you expect? Um, and when you get to a certain point, when are you going to cut it off and try something different? Yeah. So it's impo so important. So with your, with your market research, do you do testing early? Oh, it's the first thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Just find out. We can't market if yeah. you don't know what, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what you're selling and, yes. and who it's for. Yeah. Otherwise it's again, a waste of money. And you do it just virtually online? Yes. Oh, yeah. sometimes, sometimes focus, focus groups. groups. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, especially if it's a gin company. Yeah. Um, <laughs> of it's very important to get the women <laughs> and the men. <laughs> Free up conversation. You know, like it's <laughs> very open. <laughs> um, yeah. Fair enough, yeah. Yes, but it, it's interesting, you know, people, my background's in organizational HR and strategy, and, and yeah. I love people, and people are really actually quite predictable and the more um, and, and I can consume information like what you were saying before it's got very quickly you know to get an get an idea of people and they do sit in pockets yeah um, so the more that you can understand people and the psychographics of people and you know how they're gonna behave yeah the more you can again also target your research to to um, bigger groups and things like that as well this is the reason it's i'm helpful. no good at marketing because i'm a i'm a things geek <laughs> not a people geek <laughs> so yeah, you, and, people. and i've had this discussion with hamish before <laughs> like i wake up in the morning and someone presents a problem with me and i just immerse myself in who's going to use it become that person and then solve it wow. and it comes really easily to oh, me gift. but but to do marketing i'm lost mm. I'm, like a, I'm, I'm blinded but and yeah, you, you, you've anyway. got the same thing, except you're a people oh, yeah, person, so people centric. The, yeah. And you wake up and you see solutions for what will, will trigger people's emotional Absolutely. response and, and uh, digging into the pocket, pocket and actually parting with money to, to buy a product, which is really good. So, Correct. Yeah, it's a good compliment. And, and what I've learned over the years, I mean, I'm pretty handy. I do fix anything I've come across, but I'm not been able to do marketing with my own products and I can't <laughs> do it so you got to know what your what your strengths and weaknesses are oh. and once you realize that you mm. just hand it over and and I also that's another big thing in fact <coughs> I was at a breakfast this morning and we were talking about that that and I think you know also when you're starting out you you get worried that you do have to wear all the hats and you do have to do everything and I mean cost is obviously a, a big part of that but I would say to the to the startups to the entrepreneurs, you know, make a list of what you are good at and what you like doing from the very beginning, and then work out at what point you will outsource all those horrible things. Because, you know, it's the old adage of um, should I get a cleaner? Well, mm. how much are you charging yourself out, and how much is the cleaner? You know, so if you're good at selling, don't be sitting there behind the desk trying to work out the logistics yeah. when that's not your yeah. sweet spot get somebody who can do it yeah mm -hmm. and allocate a budget for it absolutely because obviously you know people come to me and we work out the budget for the manufacturing or, mm. the, or the development or whatever prototyping but usually if there's an outlet there has to be a budget for that as well absolutely you know, so, yeah and people yeah. just don't they no, well, that's, that's where I've you, experienced you that regularly where you mm. get no, people that yeah. uh, will you budget resources? for uh, design manufacturing put it on the shelf and then oh well we don't well, there's nothing left for marketing at all <laughs> and and so then you end up having to you know trying to explain to them well no you've got to have something left over or try and work in with it somehow but then you end up with a you know you go into that poverty mind well they go into that poverty mm -hmm. mindset where they put all their eggs in particular baskets which are important but then forget about actually how to attract people so oh. that's a it's a huge pitfall so yes I just, everyone thinks that their product's going to sell itself mm. and, and then nothing ever sells it's nothing invisible to, until it's talked no. about you well, know this so, is it you yeah. can't be a success if you're a secret that's what yeah. i say to a lot of people yeah. you know i had a i had a big business the other day who came and you know it, it cost 13 million to uh create the establishment and everything and it's a well-known i won't mention the brand but and i said to him oh so you know what what's the marketing plan to get this 
you know, this new one out there. And he goes, oh yeah, we've been talking to a few people. And that was the 13 million. I just went, what? No plan. Yeah. And to me, I was just like, oh, ah. so you're right, Hamish, in regards to that. No, and, and you'll find that the big successful companies, I mean, I think supplements, uh, Michelle and I both know someone that has a supplement and I had to explain to him that, look, and he knows I'm talking to him, <laughs> that the, 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 big, the big players will spend a million dollars a week on marketing, yeah. literally a million dollars a week. Mm. Uh, it, stuff just obviously doesn't fly off the shelf, you know. And that's not to say we have to spend a million dollars a week, but no. it just proves a point that even a successful multi multi million dollar company doesn't stop marketing. They don't sit there and go, "Oh well, we've got mm. enough coming in, we've got good turnover, we'll just stop." Once they stop, that's it. They'll they'll be a slow decline from that point. Mm. And that's what I've seen as well. You know, even with smaller companies, they stop marketing because they oh. get to a certain revenue level and they think everything's going to be fine. But someone else, that's just someone else's opportunity to come in and under, undercut mm. uh, and take away your market. So that's the, that's why there's always opportunities in any market because someone's stopping marketing at any one point. Oh, you're so right. You know, I, that's such a big one. And also, and I'll admit myself, made all the mistakes, <laughs> which is why it's important now to share. And I'm very, you know, any questions anyone has, I'm always um, willing to answer because if you can take some of that pain yeah. <laughs> um, and cash losing <laughs> away for for businesses um you know all in um but it, it always amazes me like you know we do we we sort of we market we get busy and then marketing falls by the wayside um you know and then it's like oh my god and you scramble and oh we better and it's about momentum everything yeah. we do is about momentum and it has to always be there and it always has to be budgeted for mm. like you said scott and you know so don't um yeah it and and especially with social media now you mm. know it is mm. people are just coming up with ideas left right and center mm. and they if they do have a budget you're out mm -hmm. you're you're done well, can we just go back a step there? I'd like to just talk about metrics when it comes to social media because I think there's a huge misunderstanding uh, and, I, and I like what, and I'm sure that's a contentious issue with some people, especially these so-called influencers, but uh, with Instagram, they've taken away the, the, the likes, likes counter. Now, the I, yeah. well, <laughs> well, it, well, that's the problem. Is that the point? You know, I mean, if you've got a good value proposition and a good product, it's not really about how many people follow you, how many people you like. So Michelle had just a, 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 yes, from your perspective, <laughs> what, what are the metrics people should be worried about on those platforms? Look, I think the number one thing with social media is perception. Mm. Look, let's be honest. And that's why I think if you're going to take away the likes, you know, and especially with the millennials coming through, I mean, you know, they're going to be the biggest buyers out there. They want to know that they're hanging with the cool people. You know, and it, 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 it's all rubbish. But if you can create that, it is. I, I hate social media, I'll be honest. But you've got to play the game. And the game has to be strategic. Mm. So, you know, I often say in my workshops and stuff, you know, everything I put on social media is strategic. Everything. And so in one sentence, you can be telling people who your ideal client is, why you're perfect for them, why you're good, and, you know, that they should come to you. But you haven't said i'm a jerk at the same time you know so mm. through your brand branding through your images through your wording um and you have to utilize it that way but when it comes to the metrics it's not about likes and followers it's about engagement and conversion and i think this is where a lot of people go wrong because you know i had a i had a big I won't say what a uh, franchise that um, came to me and they said oh it's great we've got 10,000 likes on our page so and they were launching in Brisbane and when I looked in the back end of course 7,000 of those likes were from India and all over the rest of the world and that's fantastic you know I might meet one of my brothers there or you know good day how you're going you know but um, <laughs> <laughs> but but rubbish when it comes to launching in Brisbane. So it's really important to know who your who those clients are in the metrics. And and you know if you're targeting the forty plus people and everybody following you is twenty five, something's wrong. Yeah. You know. And you so every single week we look we do reports for our clients and we're looking at all that sort of information mm. because you know we we need to be specific to make sure the marketing's working. 
Yeah. Mm. You know, yeah. and you're attracting the right people through and you're on the right platform and mm. otherwise you need to adjust. Mm. I think that's the, every now and again I get a spam email and it's all about how to buy, you know, you can buy for you know, 100 bucks, 10,000 Instagram followers. <laughs> but it's just, it's you rubbish. look at it and laugh, you think, because I know people that do that and they think that's going to yield some sort of result. But again, who are those people? What sort of value are they going to, what, what relationship can you build with them? them? Where are they? Yeah. And how relevant is it? So Correct. I think that's where people have got, numbers are, numbers are important, but big numbers aren't necessarily important. It's the, the right numbers which count. Correct. Mm. And the engagement, particularly with yeah. all the algorithms now, you know, mm. with, with your Facebooks, with your Instagrams, with your LinkedIn's, etc. It is very much about the more, it's a bit like popularity at school, I think of it as like the more active you are the more they like you the more they put you forward you know so it's not just about setting and forgetting you have to engage yourself in your marketing in order for the algorithms to kick in to engage with you Mm. and then it will start and again then the momentum kicks in so quite often we'll set up things will go hard say for a month just to kick the algorithm in just to get the people back because you know you can put out a post and nobody ever sees it but You know, and then you look at maybe Facebook advertising or whatever advertising to, you know, grow your, but you've got to have the engagement. Otherwise, you're just, you're preaching to nobody. Yeah. (laughs) So you're wasting your time. Mm. I mean, people are like sheep, unfortunately. Oh, they are. uh, That's why people buy the likes. Well, if there's 10,000 people like this site, I'll, I'll join it as well. If 20 people like the site, well, who are these losers on? I'm not going to be involved. <laughs> it's a bit like our podcast. Yeah. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> Every, look, Maslow's theory, people, the number, it used to be security, but Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the number one need now is people want to connect and belong. It's the number one need. Wow. So part of that, and I mean, I think social media is one of the you know reasons for that, is that people want to be a part of something you know and and whether it's a cause or Mm. whether it's some sort of you know social enterprise or whether it's just a group of other people who are cool yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. i mean they don't experiment because they had two restaurants serving the same food beside each other and Mm. put 20 people in one and they just kept there's a line up two hours at the door and the other one's empty donut time was the perfect example of that wasn't it oh what am i missing out on Mm. fomo you know Yeah. yeah yeah So I guess you're trying to tap into that psyche in a lot of ways. Oh, you have to. Mm. Mm. You know. It's going to be interesting to me because I've got no idea. <laughs> it comes to marketing. You keep saying that, Scott. But, I but think you do. I, I do. I, do I am intrigued idea. by, you, by people like yourself do. who understand it. It's, it's, it's neat. <laughs> but it's beyond me. No, no. <laughs> Don't say that. Okay, Michelle, what are the, so what are the current trends with... Uh, marketing that entrepreneurs should be aware of like mm-hmm. what, what are you seeing that's changing the market I mean marketing strategies tactics are changing all the time so what can you absolutely oh god they're bloody hell they're changing almost every day mm. look I think um, some of the important ones um, if you're looking at well from a sort of metric back to your metric question point of view SEO you know every day I get 20 people spamming about SEO okay mm-hmm. your search engine optimization and the thing is a couple of things on that is that if you're going to go and spend money to um to be found you've got to make sure that you really know what your those keywords are and what people are actually searching so do your research around that otherwise it's a complete waste of money and nowadays if you know what those words are and what people are searching the organic seo which costs you nothing but your time um you can just you can get so much more from that and you know i put out a thing on my page thank you um saying who clicks on ads Mm. and i had 470 responses and only one person said i click on the ads i always go down to the first person under the ads okay you know and so wow i was quite blown away by that but i'm not surprised i don't click on the ads Mm. because i think oh you know you guys obviously got a lot of cash but and sometimes i click on them just on purpose just so they spend their money but um (laughs) 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 particularly the competitors of my clients take that 20 cents (laughs) yeah well well, it's expensive now i mean you know some of them are paying uh, you know two to six dollars a click Mm. um depending on the the Mm. thing so um very important to um to really look at the keywords so i'm always looking for ways that you can do market marketing without spending money okay Mm. so organic seo and organic keywords and such is a really good 
trend to jump on. And again, it goes back to that ideal client. Other trends, look, I think, again, it depends on the client. Instagram is Instagram is wonderful for the, so I basically, I talk to the men on LinkedIn because it's business and obviously that's my target market. I talk to the women on Facebook because it's a bit more fluffy and it's a bit more social. And then I talk to the younger generation on Instagram. Hmm. So again, very different messaging, different colors, different everything, but that way you're, you're targeting um, your messaging better. And then of course, if you've, you've got a, a product that's quite uh, full on, I can't think of the word, you know, that's where you're jumping on Twitter, where you people are following what's going on and that sort of thing. But I think the biggest thing is that, and you touched on it before Hamish, is always looking at what opportunities are coming up in the market in regards to trends. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every month pretty much you should be, or we work quarterly, you should be looking at your business and going, okay, what's going on in the marketplace and where can I, and same with your products, you know, where can now, now I potentially put that product or that service that's a new niche or how can I, you know, um, because those are the companies that are growing, mm. you know, but too many companies, um, regardless of size, I find they just, this is what we do and this yeah. is how we do it. Okay, it's a bit like, you know, the Ubers and the Airbnbs, all of those, there's always someone out there and it scares the hell out of me, particularly with the younger guys because they're champions. Mm. You know, you it's you got to be watching your back and you got to be constantly reinventing yourself and reinventing your business and, and looking for those opportunities. Otherwise, you're just not going to last and looking at your business models and, mm. you know, and I'm sure you do that with all these guys anyway. Yeah. Mm. No, I think Uber's a very good example too. Of them. I've noticed they've done a hell of a lot of marketing in the last few weeks because of Ola mm. and Didi. And well, look you know, at Didi. I mean, wow. look at, they were, Uber was once the renegade. Now they're just another cab company, really. I feel bad for Uber. You know, they've mm. they've laid the foundations and they've spent all the money and they haven't made a lot of money. And then you get, you know, a Didi come in and they approach what within three months. Well, every... they're just buying customers at the moment. Exactly. Mm. And I think they're smart, mm. you know, and they saw an opportunity and then they come. It's a bit like the scooters as well, you know, the Lime scooters, yeah. the new guys yep. that came in, but it's about recognizing those opportunities. Mm. Well, yeah. so, but I suppose that's another thing that we see quite often too, Scott, is, is people that are first to market, they get so carried away with, you know, it, it's all, oh, this is the only thing on the market like it, but someone can come up behind very quickly and depending on how you patent, and your patent strategy and how that works in with your marketing, that's also very important to make sure that you can keep your niche yeah. or at least mm. defend it to the best of your ability. And also making sure you initially found the right market to be in. So mm. if you yes. if you go to the premium market and every, and everyone did, no one wanted to pay 80 bucks, they wanted to pay 20 bucks. Mm. You're dead in, in the, the morning. You, may, you shouldn't either shouldn't have taken the product on or, or you should have aimed at the $20 mark and hopefully mm. make it work. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's but so it's true. very hard. We've got a very small population oh. and we're very vast. So mm. sometimes those, those opportunities aren't even there. Absolutely. You know, I've, I've certainly done a product before where I've looked at the market, I've seen this, this, the lower ends field, the middle ends field, we can only go premium, mm. we put the premium out there mm. and it was just overpriced. Mm. Bugger. You know, it was just a mess. It was very, it's very rare we do that, but you know, mm. well, well it, it needed a very good marketing plan to go with it, which, mm. which wasn't provided. So yeah. it probably could have worked if you had of built people's expectations up to to the point where they realised they needed it. Mm. And I think also, look, I, I think particularly the the in, you know <laughs> the inventors etc. is that there's also a lot of guys out there um, who are looking to fund things. Mm. So don't think that in you know private equity businesses and things like that, there's a lot of guys with a lot of cash. Mm. So if it's a really good idea, don't be afraid to ask the question. Mm. And and I think you know sometimes the startups go, oh no, this is my baby, I don't want to lose it. But, you know, if you, and you probably know more about this, Scott, but, you know, giving away 10% to then, you know, be the leader and all that mm. sort of thing could be an option. So, you know, I guess I'm just saying don't not think about that because yeah. it's, um, there are a lot of guys with a lot of knowledge and a lot of contacts and a lot of all of that who want to invest in business yeah. and also help and mentor and stuff Generally like that. Generally, we can, and we want, you know, you see in the office, it's very small, it's just me here. Generally, you can get people to a point where they're going to work in prototype fairly reasonably. And then, generally, investors come along who are usually very good business people. Yes. And um, they're good at marketing and they've got money. Um, the money normally goes towards marketing and maybe manufacturing mm -hmm. the product to take it to market. So Makes sense. You know, but that's 
the ones that can't raise that capital are the ones that struggle. You know, so, of course. Yeah. I know, which is a shame. And some people are just hard, aren't good at asking. I'm not very good at asking for things. A lot of us aren't ever, good at ever asked a neighbour for the mother or anything. I'm just not that like, sort of person. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it's an Australian yeah. thing too. Is we aren't very good at product? asking. <laughs> but you really have to. You've just got to go out there and knock on doors. We've got some really good yeah. products here from day one. Even the one I talked about before, which made a lot of money. Mm. Um, right to the end, I'm saying, you need a partner in this. It's too big mm. for you. And luckily, it just happened to be the technology provider fell in love with the product and oh thank that, goodness you know, yeah got behind him but oh, otherwise God. it would have gone pear-shaped because he just hadn't been young and asking the question mm. yeah, the piece, yeah. Mm. Mm. it is hard it's it is hard. it's scary yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put yourself out it, no, i think i think you know we have this this big ideal i know i did with in the beginning that oh you know we can go out there and make millions and, and it's all a bit of a pipe dream but we don't we don't get the foundations right and we don't look at the big picture you know we just jump in there and <laughs> make it little count and, and yeah you know and so there's nothing wrong with that though i mean that's how, no, things, that's that's how things start I think. exactly you, you, you face exactly. reality eventually yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no no <laughs> exactly exactly the optimism is the is you, the most oh, you powerful must. factor in people getting you know improving the world you know honestly mm. if you weren't optimistic that, that something was going to succeed mm. and how many things have People have put them forward, mm. like Uber. Yeah. They put them forward. They may not have made a lot of money, but now that's it's improved everything we do with transport. Exactly. And, you know, it's, yeah. It's don't give up. Don't you know, give the, up. The electric cars. I mean, there's a environmental issues with the batteries, but yeah. it'll change. It'll it'll find Absolutely. its way. It'll fix itself. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We've got to be optimistic. And an, an optimistic and pessimist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> persistent. There's enough pessimists persistent. in the world. I'll tell you. No, no, we don't I'll need I'll tell you what we can't do. Yeah, right. God. <laughs> no, 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 no. Persistence is the key. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. That is the key. Yeah. Yes. Got to have a hard head. Keep knocking it against the wall and hopefully you'll find a hole in it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Speaking of which. Or you'll meet Michelle and she'll put you in the right direction. <laughs> All right, Michelle. That's uh, you. Thank you for uh, giving us your time today. That was absolutely fascinating. Thanks for coming along. Really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. Great asset to your listeners. You've been listening to Off to Market with Scott Farley and Hamish Chadwick.